Well, welcome, 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 ambassadors. We want to thank you and greet you with the love of Elohim. We're so excited that you came on tonight with us, uh, and we're going to get into our teaching. But first, we want to thank you for uh, liking, subscribing, and sharing thus far. We do appreciate all of the love uh, that we are receiving and all of the things that that the ambassadors are saying that is empowering them, that is teaching them, that is leading them, that is enlightening their minds, and that they make they make an exchange uh, for their will, for the Father's will. Now, on tonight, we're going to get into a really good um, discussion on this evening because uh, it's something that most ambassadors need more clarity on. Uh, it's a lot of um, doctrine that is being dispersed to ambassadors uh, and believers that isn't uh, correct or is in error, uh, not lining with the word of Elohim. And so when we understand that the Holy Spirit has been given to us so that we uh, and he uh, will guide us into all truth, we fully understand that the word of truth and the spirit of truth have to agree. Uh, the issue, uh, and we're getting into this this evening, is many uh, leaders and uh, individuals in uh, throughout scripture, we see that man was doing things and taking things that the father did not say and counting it as law uh, in the earth. And so to alleviate that, the father gave us the Holy Spirit to make sure that uh, when the spirit hears the word of truth, that it will let us know if it agrees or disagrees. And so we're going to go over a misconception on a lot of things that we see today. And what I really want you to understand what the Holy Spirit is leading me to do is to, to take time out to deal with this thought. Go to the root because there's only two sources of thought is whether uh, those two sources of thought comes from light or it comes from darkness. And we have to understand as ambassadors that we must take every thought captive. As uh, uh, Corinthian uh, Bet tells us that we must take every thought captive and subject it to the word. The word has to agree. The spirit and the word must agree. If it doesn't agree, then guess what, ambassadors? Guess what, scholars? We need to go search it out. We need to make sure that we hear on the Holy Spirit to tell us and teach us kingdom concepts. It's a lot of teaching going out, and it's a lot of concepts uh, that are being dispersed in other believers' belief system uh, by way of them uh, receiving a doctrine that is tainting the belief system and causing the word to be of none effect. So the scripture tells us that a little leaven leavens the whole lump, meaning a little erroneous uh, doctrine error will cause us to not be effective. So that's why it's important for us to make sure that we take every thought captive and, and subject it to the word. It's, it's very important, ambassadors. We want you to get this. Holy Spirit is wanting to, to dwell in a place that is clean, a house, a, a temple that is clean. We we just got out of the Feast of Sukkot and we talked about how we are living vessels. We are the tabernacle that the Holy Spirit dwells in, but the Holy Spirit cannot dwell in a, in a dirty house. The Holy Spirit is attracted to order. And, and so we need to get our minds in order. We must get our belief systems in order by tracking the source of the thought. Why am I doing what I'm doing? What's causing me to reject when the truth comes? Why I, am I rejecting the truth? Well, scripture tells us, it tells us is if the light in you is actually darkness, how great is that darkness? How great is the deception of the doctrine that you receive and you count it as truth? And guess what? When you count something as truth, you set up a set of convictions, uh, a standard, uh, a culture is being developed because of the original precept. So if the original precept is tainted, is it, it if it's causing you 
to to sin the scripture tells us if your left hand sin or causes you to sin then you need to cut it. you need to separate from it so we have to separate from this erroneous teaching rome is still ruling we got to get disconnected to rome from rome and get into the kingdom school of thought so let's get right into what we're going to be teaching tonight because it's very and very and very 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 important so we're talking about uh the truth about water baptism we have a lot of ministries that are teaching the only way to get salvation or to to be uh initiated into the kingdom school of thought is through a water baptism people are still teaching this and so what we do is we take this thought and we deal with the thought so we're going to give you the truth about water baptism where it came from how why was it important then what are we doing with it now? Is it necessary? What does it actually mean when we go through this process? Because if you're like me, um, I got a water baptism when I was uh, around 12 or 13 years old. And I remember being in the ministry and going to uh, the pool pit and they had a special area that had a pool in it. And uh, you would change clothes and then you would walk out with this either a robe on or you had white. This particular time I had a white shirt on with blue jeans. I don't know why I got in the water with blue jeans, but I did. And so uh, we get, get, got into the water and the pastor starts to um, say the word uh, and speak scriptures. And so then he tells me that you'll be baptized with the son, with the, with the father, the son and the Holy Ghost. And then we go into the process the initiation let me make sure this phone doesn't fall i want to keep up with my time all right so so this process was done i was dipped in the water and i came up and honestly i didn't really feel anything i just felt wet <laughs> and not to say it, it that it's not effective however i just i didn't get the revelation of what it was and and that is what's happening to a lot of believers we're going through a ritual. We're going through a ceremonial law, uh, a ritual law. And we expect that to make us clean when only what it does is it provokes the mind to remember what it means. But do we actually know what it entails? Because the will of the Father is that every man be saved and be uh, called to the knowledge of the truth. Uh, so receiving means that I have to enter into a new school of thought. I'm being initiated and that's what it is. And so let's go into uh, a little bit of what we'll be talking about on this evening. And we're gonna take our time. So what will we be covering today? Well, we'll be covering what is a baptism. Uh, it's very simple. We need to, when we're dealing with the thought, we have to make it simple so we can go back to the source of it. Now, what is it? What is a baptism? And then we have uh, the type of baptisms. We've been getting taught this uh, and been going into depth with this. And that is water, been, being baptized by water, and then the baptism of fire. So we're going to go in depth with that. And then the different types of law. So again, we're dealing with the thought. So I can't just give you a simple answer. Yeshua never just gave a simple answer. He would give you the source of the thought. He would take you to the source of the thought because if you get the source of the thought and you agree with it, then it now becomes a conception, which you agree with that thought. And the result of you agreeing with that thought is a lifestyle that is conducive to the law that you received as truth. And then you have the different types of doctrines uh, and we're going to go into the doctrine of the pharisees and we're going to go into the doct doctrine of the uh, sadducees and then lastly is water baptism necessary is it necessary for you to enter into the kingdom is it is it does the father honor water baptisms so let's go to where we're going to next so our question is what is a baptism a person's initiation into a particular activity 
or role is typically one per, uh, typically one perceived as difficult. So it's an initiation into a activity or a role. And simply put, baptism means initiation. It's an initiation. When you uh, become a part of, uh, and I'm going to give it, I'm going to give you a, an, a worldly example of this. When people go into uh, these fraternities and uh, sororities, they are being brainwashed with a school of thought and they are being initiated into an organization. The same type of uh, standard or things that are, are orchestrated to, to be initiated into, to, into this uh, organization is the same thing they use for you to enter into um, gangs uh, like Bloods and Crips and things of that nature. They have, they recite a certain creed or an oath. Uh, they they are initiated, and this particular instance is totally different than a fraternity or a sorority. However, it is an initiation process, and then you come into that school of thought, and then you become uh, immersed in that culture, the culture of a sorority, the culture of a fraternity, or the culture of a gang. It's being initiated into this school of thought, and so guess what? When you become initiated into a school of thought, you now take on an ideology and a philosophy. Ideology meaning a school of thought that has now been implanted into my belief system. So if something comes to challenge, and this is what I was saying at the beginning, is when something, why is it that when the truth comes, I'm rejecting it? Why is it when the truth comes, I'm rejecting it because my school of thought that I've been initiated into, I've set up a, a system of some rules or regulations and I've been in, uh, immersed in this culture. So when something comes to challenge that, because now that's my source. If it's my source, how uh, this is why I'm going to defend it. So this is a, a, a key reason why we have to break free of religion, have to break free of these uh, holidays the world system, because if you let it root into your belief system, you're going to find yourself fighting something that the father deemed uh, law lawless in, in this particular country. And so you have to be careful of that. So let's go uh, back into it. Let's go into our scripture references so you can see uh, a few instances of baptism. Scripture talks about it all through throughout the scripture. So we just pulled a few of those. Uh, so we see in Matthew Yahoo, aka Matthew uh, 28, 19 through 20, it says, Go therefore and make disciples, make scholars, make those who that, that have been initiated into that school of thought uh, of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. We're getting ready to deal with this, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you and behold I am with you always to the end of the age and then in Mark is 16 and 16 we see whoever believes and is baptized will be saved but whoever does not believe will be condemned and then lastly Romeo M 6 3 through 4 says do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Yeshua were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Yeshua, the Messiah, was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. All right, so I know you heard me say over in Matthew Yahoo, baptizing them in the name. And this is where a lot of believers get tricked up because they it's a song called Just a Mention of Your Name. And, and, and what it says is just a mention of your name, people are saved. Just a mention of your name, people come in that were that were um that were sick, come in being healed. And the father once winked at ignorance. But when you receive knowledge, when you receive light which comes from a pure source, the Father, Elohim, 
then you have to either reject it or or allow it in. And as ambassadors, when we become saved or initiated into the kingdom school of thought, we have said to the Father, I'm, I have a free will. You created me with a free will. However, I'm going to uh, exchange my will for your will. And this is why the Malaks in heaven, the country of heaven, they don't have a right to exercise their free will. And this is why the old serpent, Halali, or uh, Satan, or Lucifer, uh, Lucifer was that was his name uh, in the place, the country of heaven, when he rebelled against the Father. He had no right to exercise his will, and he did, and he was eternally punished for it. So there's no redemption for him because he was in the very presence, the place, the country of heaven, and he went against the laws, and he and and he made a choice to do something other than what the father told him to do. And so that's why he hates us as ambassadors so much because we have the uh, freedom of choice. However, as an ambassador, when I exchange my will for the father's will, that's saying to, to the father that I'm not doing what I want to do, but I'm doing your will. And so let's pose this question here. Can you be baptized in the name of the Lord? We just saw it in the Bible, so it must be right, huh? We have to search things out. Listen, ambassadors. The moment you, because we have ambassadors in the earth who just read King James. I only read the King James uh, Bible. I only read the King James. I only read the New Living Translation. I only read the New King James. I only read this. And what you're doing as an ambassador is telling the father that I am at the mercy of this translator and not diligently seeking or earnestly seeking your face as you told me to do. Because I'm at the mercy of the translator, whatever they wrote, whatever gender that they had, whatever, uh, whatever uh, mission that they were carrying out is going to be implanted in this in this bible and i'm going to receive from it and when i receive from it it's going to be part of my school of thoughts going to be downloaded and so again when the word comes and then we start getting teaching on the hebrew lexicon and how to dis, uh, dissect and get the pure word in its original form you have rebellion you have resistance because they have now been subjected into a new school of thought. And, and just think about that. The one that you say that you that you are uh, in covenant with, you're going against what, what the father says. So that's why it's important. So no, you can, the, the, the name did not, did not heal you. He said, come in my authority. The name reveals the character. It reveals the purpose, the, the characteristics of the father, the authority that he has given to all ambassadors is what saves. However, the father still, he, he wants winked at ignorance. And so now we have to get light. We have to get knowledge. And so, no, it says whoever, let's go back to it. It says whoever believes Hold on. I'm sorry. Matthew 28, 19. It says, go therefore and make disciples of all and, and as scholars uh, of all nations, baptizing them in not the name, but the authority that's been given to you in the earth. We are legal agents in the earth because we have bodies. Our bodies grant us legality in the earth. And what that means is that we have the legality in the earth to speak. Now, Speak what? The will of the Father. If it's deemed lawful and full of life in heaven, then it has to be on earth. So we agree to what heaven has already said. So why is it that we try to make up our own thing? Because we received a thought that wasn't pure and we didn't check it. So no, 
We don't baptize in the name. We don't just call on the name. We know the father's name. And, and, it and when you study his name in the Hebrew, it tells you all about that authority, that access to the kingdom, uh, that access to the kingdom, that anointing that we receive, that, that covering that we receive, the covenant that we're in, we're marked, we're identified because he's placed his anointing and, and characteristic in those who have authority in the earth. So we baptize them in the authority of the father. So we have to understand that it's more than just a name. The father wants us to really dominate in the earth and we get caught up on things like this. And that's why we're getting ready to go into the doctrine of the Pharisees and the Sadducees because they were caught up on things like this and question Yeshua, the one that came to redeem them. Think about this. You coming to do something for someone else. They don't even know what you're doing and what you're getting ready to go through. But but you know what you're getting ready to go through. And you have the, the ones that you're trying to to uh, to initiate and get back into the the right position. The righteousness is fighting you. It's is backstabbing you. It's calling you these names and and rejecting you. So. I think about that as an ambassador. I think about that as uh, Yeshua in the earth and what he had to endure um, being in the earth. So again, can you be baptized in the name of the Lord? You can be baptized in the authority. We got to get back to the authority and stop, stop playing with this thing. So let's go to this next slide here. So in order to understand, because we're talking about water baptism, we have to understand that there's laws that have been established because when Yeshua came, he said, um, I did not come to abolish the law. Matter of fact, let's go to it. In Matthew Yahoo 5, 17 and 20, it says, do not think that I have come to abolish the law. That means to totally get rid of, to destroy, to, 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 there's no remnant of it. Don't, don't think that I've come to do that or the prophets. And just a quick synopsis, we have a lot of in-depth teaching on what this means, but a quick synopsis is prophets are repeaters of the law. It goes back to the word. It goes back to the original intent and, care, uh, and purpose of what the father established. So when a prophet speaks, he's he just repeating the word. Any ambassador in the earth can be deemed a prophet because it's repeating the law. The law will predict success or failure and that's why the prophecy when uh Yonah was speaking he was speaking a prophetic because he knew that it was that Yeshua was coming okay so I have not come to abolish them but to fulfill them for truly I tell you until heaven and earth disappear not the smallest letter not the least stroke of the pen now in enough in the original translation of this it wasn't talking about the, it was talking about the smallest letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which is the Yud. And it talks about the stroke of the pen. And, and it's talking about those letters. So not least one of those letters, those Hebrew alphabets, uh, uh, disappear from the law until, uh, would be any means by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commandments and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses of those uh, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, this is something that we get mixed up on. Uh, and, and as a congregation, as those believers that come together with fighting, fighting and disagreeing and division is, is present. When division is present, the old serpent is there. And so what you have to see on this is that this law, when we see this law, we have to dis distinguish between what law was he talking about? And, and, and the Greeks did a, did a great job of trying to mix up and mix in their culture, their agenda, their 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 role uh, in destroying and creating a culture 
that'll be set apart from the father's way of doing things. And so what I mean by that is there's different words. We're going to go into uh, Logos, a, a study tool that we use, and it's very, it's, it's excellent for those who want to seek the word out. So let's go to that. We'll shift over to uh, Logos, and I want to show you this in real time. I want to show you this in real time. So this word for law in the Greek, they summed up all of these words into basically one word, and that Greek word is nomos. And so when you see it in the new, uh, what people call the New Testament, which is the Messianic scriptures, you see it all through there. So when you go and dissect the word and get the uh, manuscript of it, it's in Greek. So now you have to do extra study and extra following to get to the Hebrew a word and this is how it has got mixed up so a lot of people think today's time that the law has passed away so we don't have to, we're not under the law is what they say and what Yeshua was saying to us was no I didn't come to abolish it but to fulfill it but which law was he talking about because he dealt with the other laws that we that we're getting ready to go into and he spoke to leaders that were enforcing those laws to get them to see, repent, change the way that they think because a new kingdom is here. So we see here this Greek word for law is nomos. And you have other ones, but all of these scriptures here, over 200, and 200 of these scriptures can are successfully uh, translated incorrect because we don't know which one they're talking about. Well, we can get to it now, but just think about someone that barely studies actually trying to figure this out. They'll throw it under, well, it don't matter. That again is given into another school of thought. Now, let's look at this Hebrew word. And we have a, a good number of different meanings. So you have ceremonial law, you have ritual law, you have moral law, you have a civil law. But the, the law that Yeshua came um, to, to bring back bring back into remembrance for those ambassadors who want to live as ambassadors in the earth in righteousness and holiness was this Hebrew word, the Torah. This is the one he's talking about. Get rid of the ritual and the ceremonial in order to, for you to think you're righteous. And this is where these other doctrines come in at. But we see here that the Torah, which is spelled this top here, and it's letting us know that it's a covenant. So the covenant that teaches us, that connects us, that shields and protects us, that gives us access uh, to, to the kingdom of heaven by way of the anointing is embedded into the word. This same uh, law that's here is the same law that's in the book of uh, bear a sheet, aka Genesis, and, and it tells us about the word being present, that law, the law that was there is the same thing that's here in the Messianic scripture. So what the what Yeshua was saying is that I didn't co uh, come to the to abolish the teachings from the leader nailed to the cross that has marked you, that's identified you, that's in covenant with you that has given you spiritual access, that's given you authority. All that is breaking down in this word because <laughs> I, I realized that the Hebrew Olivet is inexhaustible. It keeps going because each Hebrew Olivet is a, a, is, spells out another word. So you can just infinitely keep going on just the first letter. The second, you know, going through those letters is infinite. It doesn't stop. It keeps going. It keeps going. Just as the word, because the word is life, it keeps going, it, get, it brings life. So you can never exhaust the word. So those who get sleepy when it's time to listen to the word, shame on you. <laughs> shame on you. So, yeah, so we see this here, this word Torah. And so this is the word that Yeshua uh, was saying that the law that he was talking about, it the, the Torah will teach those ambassadors how to govern a nation would teach them how to be in covenant with the father correctly and this is one of the reasons why Yeshua came back now we're still talking about the baptism 
We're still talking about the water baptism, but what we're saying here is we have to understand what he actually came back to do. And when we actually study out with the original context, with the original uh, precepts and the kingdom culture in our minds, we understand that he was dividing, making the distinction. What Zayin does, it cuts covenant. It exposes uh, what is, is, is true, what is a lie, what is false, uh, what, is, what is pure. And this is the main concept of why Yeshua came back to, to restore us back to our righteousness and dominion and to expose these different schools of thoughts. And so on part two, because now we have to end this thing, we're going to get right into um, uh, the, the uh, doctrine and, and the importance and, uh, of uh, baptism. And we're going to get the truth on water baptism and what it means today in this time. So with that being said, we want to greet you uh, with the love of Yahweh and say thank you for joining us on this evening. Continue to like, share, and subscribe. And you have the uh, ability to make a choice, to change the way that you think. The first message that Yeshua uh, taught right after his baptism, and again, we're going to get into it. But the first message that he taught after the baptism was the first word that he, he said was repent. The first message that he taught was repent. And that repent uh, in the Hebrew, it means to completely turn away what's trying to consume you, what's trying to consume your mind, and what's, what's, what's trying to get in covenant with you to destroy you, to get you out of purpose. It is totally consumed and you turn away from it. You don't go back to it. The house is completely burned down. And so these thoughts, these rituals, this 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 religious culture, this aroma that oozes out of Christians, it has to be severed. The ambassador cannot walk in full righteousness and dominion and be in religion. We're just going to keep it right there. So with that being said, you do have the ability to make the choice. And if you want to receive Holy Spirit as an as a lost king in the earth, if you confess, if you believe that you can be saved uh, and, and you acknowledge that Yeshua is the door, the access, the Holy Spirit will draw you to uh, Yeshua and you can make an exchange and come unto a new school of thought. You have that free right right now. And we give you praise, Father, for it being done. And we do say shalom and see you soon.